you know what? Let's let's take things to the sky. Let, let's leave the ground for a little bit. And let's talk about fitness drones. So this is an idea that like really first started to arise around 2012. Essentially, you have the wearables market, which is massive. And then you have the recreational drone market, which is pretty big in itself. And the intersection between the two seems to be fitness drones, and there's some interest to it. So in 2012, you had the uh, Excursion Games Laboratory at RMIT University of Melbourne. And they developed this drone that was meant to be like a pacer. It would fly at about 10 feet away from a runner. The runner would have this t-shirt that had a very specific, unique marker so that the drone could identify them. And it would, it would just act as a pacer, and it could only work for about 30 minutes or so. But people really started liking it. Like, the researchers were talking about how the users, the testers, started referring to the drone as, like, a he or a she. So they started really bonding with it as a companion. And what was really interesting is that not only was it being used as a pacer, but they were finding motivation within this drone to work out until the drone died. Like, it was basically a companion. Well, that's what I've got to say. Like, I, I enjoy running quite a bit. And I do it to exercise I hate it. a lot. I don't but, know how you do it. Um, I, I don't like running alone that much at all. I really enjoy running with my girlfriend, Nellie. I really enjoy running with my brothers. But it's challenging to run alone. So it would be nice. And I'm also terrible at keeping pace. So it would be nice to run with a drone like this to help me keep pace, to kind of like accompany me when I have to run alone. And if you know me, I'm always trying to run with someone else. So I don't have to run alone. So maybe this could never try to run issues. with me, man. Yeah. You never try to accompany me when I'm running. What's up with that? <laughs> We'll take this offline. But yeah, yeah I know what you mean. And it, it looks like that's what they were really going for. But, you know, they did a great job. They demonstrated the potential that this technology could have. And that, that was really it. It was never meant to be commercialized with the concept that they made. Then in 2015, you had the University of Nevada that came up with a drone whose goal was to really help blind people be able to navigate around the track without having assistance from anyone else. And again, they, they were able to demonstra demonstrate the capabilities of this thing. It had its own drawbacks. It couldn't be used indoors because the, the drone was using auditory feedback to help the runner. Mm -hmm. And some of that was getting messed up. And it was also really loud, yada, yada, yada. But it did work. So they were able to demonstrate. I it. think that's like a pretty novel application of this because, I don't know, I ran track in high school and I saw a lot of cross-country meets and track meets. It's incredible to see these blind runners, but oftentimes they actually need a guide runner someone who's like able to run faster than them or as fast as them to help guide them on the track um i, I imagine it'd be challenging to be a competitive blind athlete and not being able to practice or run without a, someone to guide you so something like this could really like open up doors for them in terms of being able to train and perform and compete in the way that they want to exactly or even like i like if, if you're someone like me, who's not like a professional runner, but every now and then, you know, you get this burst of energy and you want to go for a run. It'd be nice to have something yeah, that helps you to give you right? that freedom. Yeah. And you're not just dependent on anyone else. But basically, these two researchers did, did a great job at taking these steps forward. And now in 2020, we had students at um, Hongik University in South Korea. They came up with a concept drone. It's called the Traverse Drone. And it's supposed to be a personal fitness drone. Okay. So this thing is like a system composed of two parts. There's this thing that you wear around your neck. It's essentially a necklace. It's called a pod. And then you have the drone that's going to follow you as you run. While you're running, the drone is analyzing you. It's analyzing your form, your speed, et cetera, et cetera. And it's giving you feedback in real time to tell you to like, hey, you should correct your form and things like that. And then... After you're done working out, it takes all that data and sends it to an app on your smartphone. It analyzes it, and it gives you insight about your health, how much better you're doing in comparison to last week, and things like that. Yeah, this maybe I'm in the target market for this because each time that you mention this new technology, I get excited about it. But um, I think about like last summer or the summer before, I was training a lot alone. Um, Nellie and I were going to run a half marathon, but she lives in Boston. I live in Virginia, so we were training separately. I trained a lot alone, and I ended up getting these repetitive strain injuries because my form had degraded over time. And because I was running alone, gotcha. I didn't have anyone to tell me, like, hey, like, pick your legs up or, like, 
stop landing flat on your foot like that. Like you're, you know, you're doing it wrong. And, you know, I get back to running with Nelly or I go to our friend Brandon, like right away, he says like, oh, your form's wrong. You need to fix it. So having a drone like this to accompany me and give me insights on my form and my pace and my posture, this would have been really helpful during that training. Yeah, I bet. And again, like, I don't think these drones are just limited to working out. Like fitness would be a great start for it. But if you want to go, you know, for a walk at night and you don't feel safe, they could be like a little safety thing. Or if it's like the elderly or visually impaired people and they want to navigate inside their homes, they could be like an extra assistant instead of it being another person. So I feel like the potential for this is really big. In my mind, I kind of think a good application of this could be like a Fitbit where it's like first in the market of wearables and then it just kind of changes the game forever. Yeah, so, and on, I mean, you're, you're, I think you're like, perfect analogy there with fitbit because you know there wearable technologies existed but before fitbit it wasn't mainstream at all and now we're looking at you know if something like this traverse drone kind of breaks the mold and shows everyone the whole world of possibilities for drone accompanied fitness and travel and recreation this could be really exciting yeah i'm with you i want to give a quick shout out to our friend elliot for suggesting this topic it was awesome thanks elliot um 